In the absence of our board president, Ms. Stearns, I'd like to call the District 228 Board of Education budget hearing meeting to order. Uh, we have a roll call, hopefully. A roll call. Here. Mrs. Gleason here, Mr. Johnson? Here. Mrs. Jones? Mrs. Campworth? Here. Mrs. Stern? Mrs. Stern? Here. Please stand for the pledge. Mm -hmm. The pledge of allegiance is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. We have one item for the public hearing, and that's the presentation on the 2017-2018 District 228 budget. Ms. Kinder. but we are confident that this is a safe bet to account for in our budget. So this is um, based off of numbers that were given to us by the state, um, but no final numbers have been released and probably will not be released until at least December. Our second budget highlight is the um, title grants. We have um, gained an additional amount of money for um, our title grants, including the addition of a Title IV grant. So you will see around an additional million dollars in title funds this year. We do also have a technology piece. We have purchased 240 new Apple TVs with Title I and Special Ed grants. We also have included 21 new projector installations, five in Special Ed conference rooms, and 16 in district classrooms. We've also included a district network switch upgrade. The total district cost for this was $108,000. Um, we were able to get this down from $263,000 with the, um, in, including our E-rate and reimbursement. And we also have included an infrastructure upgrade that will increase the individual school bandwidth from 300 megabytes to one gigabyte per school. So we thought this was a necessary piece to include in our budget highlight. Our next budget highlight includes student services personnel additions. We have added two guidance counselors and two social workers. Um, in several schools, since um, employee salaries and benefits do comprise the largest pieces of our expenditure side of our budget, we thought it was necessary to include this tonight. We do also have an additional $88,000 allocated for a fine arts equipment budget. This will cover new instruments, marching band equipment, art equipment, fine arts classrooms equipment. We have also added two additional athletic teams to District 228. We've um, decided Hillcrest High School can host a lacrosse team. And then we've also added a boys volleyball team to Bremen and Tinley Park High School. We've seen a lot of interest in these sports, so we're really excited that we've been able to add this piece and give our students another opportunity to partake in more sports. This piece of the presentation breaks down our budgeted revenues. You will see an increase 
um, from our projected actual FY17. <coughs> we have to use projected actual because our budget or our audit has not been completed. So this is the numbers that we've projected that we're going to have, but they are subject to change as soon as our audit is complete. Our federal grant budget includes the additional 1.1 million in title grants. We do also receive an additional $2 million for our QFCB um, grant interest. So we've allocated for that there. This shows the breakdown of our budget of revenues by source. As you can see, we are very heavily reliant on real estate taxes, which is very common in school districts in Illinois. And we also do rely on quite a bit of um, state aid funds as well. So this just basically gives you the breakdown of that. Next, we have our budgeted expenses. Again, comparison of prior year actuals. FY17, we've used our projected actual versus what we have budgeted for FY18. Um, we do see around $4 million increase in expenses. Um, we have not allocated for our capital projects in this breakdown. We didn't have it allocated in FY17, so in order to keep it consistent, we have not included it in this budget figure. Here you can see that salaries and employee benefits do make up the majority of our budgeted expenditure side. We have salaries budgeted at 53% of the total budget expenditures and employee benefits at 12.82%. So this chart just basically gives you a breakdown of where we spend the majority of our money. piece to notice about our budget presentation for tonight we have included in our operating funds the educational fund operations and maintenance transportation IMRF and working cash as you can see in FY 17 our unaudited actual deficit was approximately 1.7 million and this year looking at our, our operating funds we are looking at $993,000 deficit for FY 18 so we are excited to see this significant decrease in our operating fund deficit and um, again with the unaudited number it is subject to change but we are confident that this is a fairly accurate fund. And the last piece of this budget presentation includes the breakdown of estimated ending fund balances. Um, tonight we are going to be doing a working cash abatement which is why you see the decrease in our working cash fund. We will be moving $3.5 million from our working cash fund into our education fund to cover deficits in that, in that fund. And we do actually see um, a pretty noticeable difference in our O&M fund um, compared to previous year actuals and what we do have budgeted for FY18 O&M fund. on the revenues and the expense uh, charts. I don't know if you want to get to those. Or, uh, our revenues are shown uh, 83 million, or almost 84 million. And on our expenses, we're showing bottom line uh, almost 95 million. And, and that difference is around 11 million. Could, could you shed some light on that for us? Because that seems to be obviously a big span between what we bring in and what we're spending. Absolutely. Um, the revenue piece of the chart that you're looking at does not account for dollars that we will be levying for in our debt service fund. We are looking around $10 million for our debt service fund. So levy. that's left out. This is, that is left out okay. of the chart, yes. Okay, and we also are doing the working cash abatement tonight. So we will be moving $3.5 million from working cash to the ad fund, that will definitely help decrease that deficit amount. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and congratulations! I mean, the, the you know nearly well, it's just under a million uh, for our budget deficit. That's awesome. And you know, with adding two sports teams and adding some additional staff to help the, I mean, I think we're on the right path. I really do. 
I just also want to comment too, I'm impressed with the reduction and I'm glad to see that it's moving in a downward trend. So good work, congratulations. Board members participating by phone, are you guys okay? Yeah, okay, so I just want to see something. Debbie, talk. No, I'll just say that I'm okay with the president. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just like that. I know what's hard to do that. Um, that's what we're talking about. That's good. Uh, all the way around. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with the president. Public anything? motion to close the public hearing. Make the motion. So Mr. Canning, Ms. Jones. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Campworth? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mrs. Stearns? Aye. Okay. Um, in the absence of the board president, I'd like to call the regular Board of Education meeting for September 19th to order. Roll call, Ms. Gleason. Mr. Canning. Here. Mrs. Gleason. Mr. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mrs. Jones. Here. Mrs. Campworth. Here. Mrs. Ressler. Here. Mrs. Stearns. Please rise for the pledge. I nominate Evelyn Gleason. Second. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Stearns? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mrs. Campworth? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Uh, at this point, we'll be looking for a motion to approve the August 15th regular board meeting minutes and the September 12th committee of the whole meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Johnson, second by Ms. Yes. Jones. Mrs. Jones? Yes. Any discussion? Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mrs. Jones? Aye. Mr. Canning? Aye. Mrs. Gleason? Aye. Mrs. Campworth? Aye. Mrs. Ressler? Aye. Mrs. Stearns? Aye. Motion carries. Yeah, or, or uh, can we appoint Kim? She's done yeah. before. Yeah, yeah that's not Thank you. Um, board recognition to board, Dr. Nolan. Hello, um, I'm flying solo, well, kind of solo. Um, Detective Stan Tenza of the Tilly Park Police Department um, is actually being recognized by the staff here at Tilly Park High School for actually the event that he helped us coordinate um, back on September 1st to kind of christen our new turf football field, but more importantly, welcome back and honor Tim Jones um, our Titan alum our student, our football player, Park Forest police officer who was critically injured um, in the line of duty. Um, and he came back home that day. And so um, it's normally, I know, the district award. Um, the thing is, Stan Tenza has been given the district award back in 2008 because he continues to support us in many different venues. So we, we didn't want um, this opportunity to slip by with at least recognizing his efforts because I know there were some of you that were there. Um, he was no short of amazing. Um, even, I have to tell you, there was a point in time that Mike Mong and I, and you know, Mike and I helped coordinate this with Stan. You know, obviously, 
me here on the school end and he on the police end. And at one point in time, we're standing on the field and I kind of looked around at everything that was going on and I was like, I can't believe this is happening here because there's just so much. Um, 81 different police departments were represented. We had over 200 police officers here. Um, Tim and his family, um, they gave him a framed jersey that he, you know, with his number that he wore back here um, when he played. It was just really quite a night. Perfect weather, great pictures. There's a great huge photograph on Murray's desk um, in the main office if you stop in there and take a look. But because he already got the plaque that you so nicely award to our, our recipients, um, we decided to give him our Titan Statue of Appreciation. Um, this statue was actually created by a Tinley Park High School student back in 2005, Joey Pollock. And we continue to cast molds of it and give it to those who are you know, special to the Titan family. So I'll make sure that Stan tends to get this. Stan is certainly not going anywhere. He's been here for a really long time. And um, he happens to be a Cubs season ticket holder. I won't hold that against him. Um, but they're having some kind of, there's like a family night at Wrigley Field tonight for season ticket holders. So I can understand why he chose to go there. Um, this Titan statue will be waiting for him his back. So, although he's not here, thank you, Sam. Going right into the Good News Report. Good evening. To kick off Good News Reports, I have uh, representing the Bengals of Oak Forest High School, Yazra. Good evening. As always, I'm very excited to be presenting the Oak Forest High School Good News Report. There are many good things going on in Bengal Land. But first of all, I want to talk about an experience that I encountered last spring. As a, an active member in multiple clubs and a leadership position holder, I noticed quite a few things. And because I'm always striving to improve my high school, um, I had to overcome the difficulty that many, many students at our school weren't aware of many of the opportunities and clubs that they could join. And I took it upon myself to visit my um, assistant principal, Mrs. Dempsey, and tell her about an idea I had to make sure that all of our students, especially incoming freshmen, are aware of all the opportunities that our school has to give because there's so many. And this summer, a few of my close friends and I implemented a freshman activity presentation. This presentation included a keynote of the clubs that my friends and I knew a lot about. Now, I knew that I didn't want to tell the freshmen just about the clubs I'm in, just the ones I'm passionate about, because everyone has different interests. So I took it upon myself to also create an activity sheet that was very uh, student-friendly. It had pictures and a description of all 31 clubs and activities that the students at Oak High School could participate in. Um, these two resources were then distributed to incoming freshmen at the AP Geography Camp, which I was a mentor of, and on our freshman orientation day. And the entire freshman class was aware of all these opportunities, and I'm very satisfied to say that we have been seeing many new faces and clubs, which is always great. I have reached out to sponsors of clubs that I'm not in and I have no interest in, but I know lots of students do with chess club. And I know their numbers of freshmen are going up, which is great. Um, I also want to talk about Spirit Week and Homecoming. I just came back from Hall Dex and I have to go back. <laughs> it's been a very busy week for me. And personally, I love it. And my freshman class is in charge of creating our hall to represent the movie up. It's been very fun. And lastly, I want to add this. Um, regarding athletics, five varsity sports teams at my school received the IHSA Team Academic Achievement Award for the 2017 spring season. These teams held an average GPA of 3.0 or above on the 4.0 scale. So congrats to them. Um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. I look forward to presenting in the future, and I'm very optimistic for what our course families have in store. I present Mr. Jaden Lucky, who's going to give the news report for Oak Forest High School. Good evening. My name is Jaden Lucky, and I'm a junior at Oak Forest High School. I'm a member of the 2017-2018 Student Council. 
I'm here to present the good news report to you. Hillcrest kicked off the year with enthusiasm and continued dedication to its motto of soaring with unity, pride, and excellence. On our freshman day, students were met at their buses by faculty, staff, and community members engaging, I'm sorry, encouraging and welcoming the new Hawks. Greeted and supported by upperclassmen, freshman Hawks began their journey on destination graduation. The next day, all students were welcomed back to school in an assembly which featured performances and grant entrances by the Hillcrest faculty who demonstrated their spirit with cheers and chants. On September 13th, the Hillcrest hosted at least hosted its Meet the Teacher Night, with, in which families of Hillcrest students were able to meet and chat with faculty and administration in an informal setting about curriculum and exciting activities and opportunities coming up this school year. Parents and guardians were also able to meet with academic tutors, activity sponsors, athletic coaches, and members of the principal's parent advisor. They were also able to sign up for tutoring services. After the destruction of her, caused by Hurricane Harvey, Hillcrest's FCCLA, in conjunction with the Tony Park High School's FCCLA, organized a drive to collect school supplies for Liam High School and Klein Kane High School, located in Houston, Texas. In keeping with the spirit of volunteerism, volunteerism, Coach Bray's girls' cross-country team volunteered at Wingfoot's second foundation, foundation second annual Willow Walk for kids. The event, which featured a two and a half mile family dog walk in, Spring, in the Forest Reserve of Springbrook in Naperville, Illinois, raised money to support the foundation's running shoe collection and distribution program to benefit Chicago land athletes. Hillcrest is proud to announce that this week is our homecoming week and our theme is Passport to the World. Special events include special dress up days for Speed Week, a bonfire for students on tomorrow, and a powder puff game to be held on Thursday. As a new feature this year for homecoming, we have a carnival slash home fair which is to be held on Friday at, Friday at Friday's football game. Student clubs and academic departments will be sponsoring booths that will include games, fun, and artwork. The carnival will take place from 5 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. on the football field grounds during both the sophomore and varsity football games. Our homecoming dance will take place on this Saturday, September 23rd for Hillcrest students and their guests. We would like to congratulate our Hawks football team on being voted 10th in the state after week three, and currently after week four, our Hawks have three wins and one loss. Finally, to congratulate our Lady Hawks volleyball team on their third place, fin third place finish in last week's Hawks in Invitational Tournament. Hillcrest is home of the Hawks. Hawks are swift, intensely focused, and powerful creatures. They are intelligent, wise, and proud, and it's good to be a Hawk. Thank you. tonight, Val Martinez and Daisy Garcia. Um, hello, I am Val Martinez, a senior at Bourbon High School and a proud member of the Dan Theater Mathies and Quiz, uh, Quiz Bowl. Hi everyone, my name is Daisy. I'm also a senior at Bourbon and I participate in various bands, uh, NHS, and a theater department. And uh, this is Bourbon's Good News Report. Uh, Brown High School would like to welcome everyone back to the 2017-2018 school year. We are proud to announce our AP Scholars for the 2016-2017 exam year. This honor is bestowed upon students that received scores of three or higher on three or more AP exams. The following 13 students received this honor. Class of 2017 AP Scholars. Naya Blackwell, Leonard File, Tyler Graham, Christian Mercado, Jensen Oleo, Richard Ryan, Caleb Short, and Jamara Thomas. Class of 2018 AP Scholars. Daisy Garcia, Ariana Lopez, America Mata, Adriana Pacheco, and Elijah Trello. Dr. Kalkis is very excited to announce uh, the start of our Be Great campaign this year to promote and acknowledge character education and leadership with our students. Each week, a student is selected and a each student is selected for this honor and as a result of demonstrating uh, outstanding character at Bremen High School. The student is given the task of writing a short speech on what their character word means to them. With, then they share this uh, passage and on the announcements to the entire school in the morning. 
They also earned a Beat Break t-shirt, a wristband, and are pictured on our Brave of the Week forms. They have a letter sent home to, and a photo mailed to their home, and it's posted on our Twitter. Our Brave Week students of the week thus far are Elijah Trella, Be Your Best, Tiana Norman, Be Prideful, Jessica Jimenez, Be Honest, and Daniel Fuss, Be Positive. The marching band has been busy this summer and is off to a great start this school year. They performed at the Windy City Thunderbolts game Friday, August 25th, and senior drum major Daisy Garcia threw out the first pitch. Mathletes kicked off their competitive season with a great showing at Tinley Park on September 6th. At that competition, our seniors finished first in sequences and series, juniors finished first in systems of equations, and freshmen finished first in group. Max Beheimer earned first place and perfect 50 for junior senior oral in trigonometry and Brandon Spencer, Alyssa Ceballos, and Maria Rodriguez all earned perfect 10s. Our varsity boys soccer team has been doing really well this year. The team won the champ championship of the Windy City Classic at Toyota Park on September 4th for the second time in three years. The Braves defeated number one ranked Argo 1-0. The Windy City Classic is regarded as the most competitive tournament in the state and features 32 of the state's top teams. Fabian Lopez and Donato Lagunas were named Man of the Match for their outstanding play versus Plainfield South and Argo. The team was competed in the Urbana HS Tournament the same weekend of the Windy City Championship and brought home the third place trophy. On September 12th, we hosted the rival night versus Argo and were again victorious with a score of 1-0. The team is currently 10-2-1 and ranked number three by the Southtown newspaper. The varsity cross country team has also been doing really well and finished third out of 16 teams in their first major tournament at the TF South uh, invite. Uh, this was the Bremen Good News Report for September 2017, and as always, we have pride. On behalf of the Titans, I'd like to reintroduce Lauren Berry. She finished us out last year here, so now she's a seasoned veteran. So take it away. Hi, my name is Lauren Berry. I participate in volleyball and band, and I'm a junior at Timmy Park High School. I'll be presenting the Good News Report for this evening. Timmy Park High School's associate principal, Dr. Randy Calvin-Oven, has been recruited by the American Cancer Society to be part of the Real Man Work Pain campaign. He will wear pink every day during the month of October and has also pledged to raise $2,500. To help with the fundraising, members of the Titan staff brought dessert items and created a perfectly pink sweet table for the Back to School Teachers Institute Day. During our staff lunch, all TP employees were invited to make up plates of treats in exchange for a donation to the cause. It was a great success and that brought in $800. August Science teachers Tom Kearney, Mark Reese, Chad Robson, and our principal, Dr. Nolan, took a group of students to Carmdale, Illinois, for a field trip like none other. The students who attended were Cameron Broca, Frank Butler, Margoya Cross, Sean Ford, Ariana Langton, Maram Nagy, J.D. Palai, Christopher Pisano, and Nathan Ryan. Congratulations to Matt Hendricks for being featured in the Timmy Junction as a standout student of the week. He placed the saxophone in both the symphonic band and the honors jazz band. Congratulations to the girl, girls' varsity volleyball team on a great start to the season. The most recent victories were over Revis High School on Tuesday, September 12th, Oak Forest High School on Thursday, September 14th, and against Hillcrest today. On mon Monday, September 11th, the Titans had a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new tennis courts. The completion of the tennis courts marks the second new playing field for our Titan athletics this year. The Tinley Park Titans squared off against the Thornton Fractional North Meteors last Friday, September 15th. This is the Titans' homecoming game. Our Titans had an amazing show of talent as we won the game with a score of 62 to 26. The band performed, the student section in the bleachers showed their Titan spirit, and we welcomed back over 30 members of Titan alum as they celebrated their 10-year reunion. It was an amazing night for everyone. Way to go, Coach Johnson and the Titan football team. Thank you. That is all for the good news. gave a little bit of a, of a introduction to that. Um, just to, our school presentation today is actually just to kind of recap what was probably one of the most amazing field trips um, uh, anybody could ever ask for, and um, including myself, because it 
it was pretty pretty amazing. So all I want to do is kind of summarize with some pictures at first. And then I have some teachers and some students who attended the trip um, here to talk to you guys a little bit about it as well. I have there you go. So we, we head out early on Sunday morning. Um, and there was obviously our minibus um, filled with a whole bunch of kids that weren't talking to each other. Um, in fact, the group of students that went didn't really know one another. They were either recommended or showed an interest in some type of, whether it was um, astronomy or meteorology. Um, so the, I was following the bus and the teachers told me that um, there was probably very few words that were being said on the, on the bus trip on the way there, but I'll let them get to that. Our first stop was at what's called the Garden of the Gods in Southern Illinois. Um, our tour guide, Tom Kearney, was uh, no less than amazing uh, because not only um, when, we, when we arrived at this place, the line of cars parked all the way outside this beautiful park was at least a mile long. Um, somehow Tom, I think because he smiled at the right people, got us to, we got to pull right up in front, we got to turn right into the park. And we even had a front row parking spot in the park where people were literally walking and walking um, before we took a tour of this Garden of the Gods. Now, I will tell you, when we get to these pictures, um, I had no idea that this was in Southern Illinois. I didn't believe that Illinois could look like this. Um, but here are some pictures of our students. Sorry, parents, they didn't jump. They didn't fall, they didn't jump. Um, and our teachers, when we took the tour, the walking tour through this area in Southern Illinois, you can just kind of scroll through a couple of the pictures. I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous from time to time. When you see everybody standing up there on that little peak, um, you, you, you do get to be a little bit concerned, but it was, um, the sights were just amazing. Mr. Kennedy caught a little creature to show off. <laughs> Um, this is Mr. Rice and his kids, and it was kind of interesting to see the perspective, how far out they were um, out on that rock. This is probably one of my favorite pictures because, again, I, I, we just pull up to the Garden of the Gods and we're kind of, um, teachers are informing me that it was a very quiet um, and a very hot trip because they didn't know that the heat was on in the back of the bus. And so we were pretty much roasting the kids the entire way to Southern Illinois. And none of them were willing to speak up and say, hey, it's a little hot in here. Um, and then at the end, they, they were helping each other up this rock. And then they made it up to the top. And um, it was just kind of neat to see them hanging out and talking and helping each other through. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that noise is. I didn't put sound effects in here. So this is our group. Um, after the Garden of the Gods, we went and had a cookout at this other um, observation point, uh, which was kind of interesting because no matter where we went in our Titan bus, um, we were greeted by people either from Tinley Park or who had a connection to Tinley Park. So we kind of felt a little bit like many celebrities. Um, this is the day of the eclipse. Our intention was to go to another um, wildlife refuge. Um, they said the roads had been closed off since about 6 o'clock that morning because there were thousands of cars lined up. So we were lucky enough to find this just beautiful park in Marion County, and that's where we decided to set up shop. So we just hung out for the day. They played beanbags. They did all that. And this was kind of the um, main exhibit, this beautiful solar telescope. Um, Mr. Rice breaking a sweat there. <laughs> it was, if you remember, it was very, very hot that day. Um, but it was just outstanding um, to have the kids be able to come up and, and look through the solar telescope and actually see this um, as it was taking place. We even we made lots of friends. Those two gentlemen behind us are not with us, <laughs> but we were very popular with our telescope, and many people wanted to come over and, and take a look. He, here, Frank is, which was kind of cool, you'll see that in the next slide coming up. He's actually holding his, his phone up to the lens of the telescope, which you were able then to take pictures on your cell phone from what you would be able to view through um, that viewfinder. So here's just some pictures that were taken with a cell phone 
you know, through the telescope as the eclipse was taking place. And uh, I'm not going to lie, that's not a real picture. Well, I mean, it is a real picture, but I didn't take it. <laughs> because I have to tell you, at the moment that the full eclipse took place, um, it was a very interesting moment because at first people started to cheer a little bit, but then they didn't cheer because it wasn't kind of a cheering moment. It was just a beautiful, cool, out of the ordinary um, moment. And it did look just like that um, down in Southern Illinois. So my purpose in just reviewing these pictures of you, and there's just one last one, is just to thank the board for allowing us, um, yes, it was on freshman only day, um, yes, parents, if there, I know there's a couple parents here of the students, we got back late, home late on Monday. Um, you know, the four hour, five hour trip there turned into eight and a half, nine hours on the way home. Um, but um, I have to tell you, I, I don't get these many, I don't get that many opportunities to accompany kids on field trips anymore. And I realize how much I miss it and how much I miss being with the kids, seeing these experiences. So I said, I have the bug now, um, and I'm you know, interested in, in partnering up or, or tagging along with some other opportunity. So from my perspective, I just wanted to, and you can turn the lights on, I just want to say thank you to the board for approving this opportunity. But um, that was just a summary recap. The stars of the show are actually the three teachers that are with us tonight, along with, I think, our three students, unless anybody else came in. I'm going to have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their experience. We'll start with the kids. Students. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Jay Kalai. I'm a junior at Tinker Park High School. Uh, my name is Nathan Ryan. I'm also a junior at Tinker Park High School. My name is Frankie Butler, and I'm a senior here at Tinker Park High School. I'm Mark Rice, one of the science teachers. Tom Curry, one of the science teachers. Chad Robson, the science teacher. Go ahead and whatever you want to add. Well, let's, uh, let's start with these two experiences. <laughs> well, um, when we got to the Garden of the Gods, uh, Mr. Kearney did a great job pulling into that front row spot. Favorite <laughs> <laughs> spot, what, like another 10, 20 minutes of walking? Probably more than that. Okay. Yeah. Go with that. Um, when, we, uh, when we got to the Garden of the Gods, it was a pretty awesome experience. Uh, there, there were a lot of like cliff ledges that you could just get an awesome view of the surrounding area. Uh, most of the area was just forest, and it was like almost untouched, except for like a few outskirts where you can see like some little farms and stuff. But it was like an amazing uh, view of like forest and everything, um, and we got a lot of great pictures too. Um, kind of to piggyback, on that one. there was only one example that you could see from anywhere in the garden of God, people, people having an impact. There was one little farm that was cut out from the trees, and uh, this experience just away from technology and really all these people was really amazing. Yeah, like being at the Garden of the Gods is different because if you live over here, like in the suburb, there's a lot of people and there's always this like traffic and things like that, but this is solely away from it and there's no one else in sight and no one really understands or they're not just this part of the state that like they're giving out credit because it's really beautiful and not everybody sees it on an everyday basis. I, I, I'll take it from there. So as a teacher, what I thought uh, was really amazing was um, having a principal that came up with this idea. This never would have happened if it wasn't for Dr. Nolan. We had a conversation. I was thinking of trying to set something up at Panduit, doing something for the community, and I never thought we would go that far. And so Dr. Nolan just has a philosophy um, that I really buy into, and we all believe in. And so that's where this got started. Um, I have Frank in class. He wrote uh, his letter, his first assignment this year was to just write a letter to me and he talked about what an amazing experience he had and that he has a new hobby of hiking in the Garden of the Gods. <laughs> and when I think about my high school experience, no teachers ever did that for me. And what Nathan didn't mention is that he overslept. He never should have made it. It was Dr. Nolan's idea that we go to his house and we wake him up. And we wake him up. So, you know, I think that's important to know. You see the dedication. The focus here was on the students. We all had a, a great benefit from, from that experience, but um, Dr. Nolan's idea was, can we 
take a, a group of students, and as many as we can, to get them to really enjoy something and have something that they'll never forget. And so I think we, will, we would all agree we have an unforgettable experience. Um, I don't know why you guys weren't there. You're very, uh, you know, um, envious of us. So, um, another thing to point out for the board, uh, what's important for you to know is the telescope that we had uh, was purchased by the Education Foundation. I wrote a grant a few years ago, and I don't think you often hear about where does that money go, what does it get used for. So here it was, um, you know, use it in class, but here we are using it. Um, and that really makes the eclipse. If you just have the glasses, it's nothing special, but that telescope is what drew the crowd, got kids into it, and so it was a, a really neat way to see um, the foundation equipment being used um, for something that was you know, really unforgettable. So that's what I... Yeah, I, mean, I think really why we're here today, just to thank you guys really for what you've done uh, for the kids and for us the students. Uh, but I mean, it was just such a cool thing to take these kids to somewhere they've never been before and to listen to them afterwards just talk about, you know, like, I never knew that was in Illinois. And especially uh, Mark's kids were there, Teresa's kids were there, and they were hilarious. I'm just like, this, is, this isn't in where I live in Illinois. And then Mark's kids would say, well, it's not where I live either. And they were 20 minutes <laughs> apart or whatever. Uh, but I mean, like, that's what you guys uh, allowed these kids to do. And, and I mean, you know, the doors that you opened for them uh, are just really amazing. And, you know, that's all I can do is thank you. I think I was the last person in on this. I think I was texted maybe a week before this happened and said, do you want to go? And I said, yeah, well, you know, if you can pull some strings, I think I got a text about 10 minutes later. You're in. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. And then it was kind of furious that the day before of getting everything ready. Uh, but once we got there, it, it was amazing. I mean, what an experience. Everything, everything was really pretty seamless from the time we left school, from students helping load the load the van up to procuring provisions to the drive down minus the heat. <laughs> we did reprimand the students for putting the windows down. We didn't realize we were roasting them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were such great kids; they didn't say a word. I look back; they were sweaty. I, just, I thought they were nervous or excited. They were on full blast. But that, that front was nice and cool. Sorry. But um, from the time we got there, it was just a, an incredible experience. Uh, just the drive down, seeing a group of kids that literally didn't speak to each other at all. I think there were a couple games you guys played that made people Those fly are, around. Those are interesting games. <laughs> yeah, played some, played some mind games on the way down. Um, but by the time we were driving back, I asked the students um, when we were just leaving, was it worth it? Absolutely. Knowing the traffic that was ahead, I didn't realize how bad it was going to be. <laughs> stop and go traffic from southern Illinois to Chicago. Yeah. Uh, back roads, off, not off-road vans, but <laughs> took some detours along the way. Um, and every couple hours I'd ask, was it worth it? And it was always a resounding yes. So thank you very much for allowing us to go on something, such, such an amazing trip. Uh, well, we have you here. I actually have two things. One is a field trip permission form for April 8th of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Monday. It's a Monday, Sunday morning at 7 a.m. I'm not sure what courses I'll have. Okay. And I need additional supervision, Mr. Rice and Mr. Curry, but I'm not sure about what classes I need sub for you. Gotcha. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll sign the initial form, but then I'm going to pass it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I need to hand this to today. Yeah. Since the budget's good, I think we'll go great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not that the board. <laughs> 20, 20. Uh, question. Yes. Uh, the atmosphere. Obviously, we up here heard a lot about that being the site for the best viewing, right, in our country. Or the world, right? Yeah. What was it? World, 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 world. world. Yeah. What was the atmosphere like, I mean, down there? Um, were people in... Great moods, obviously, you know, there's a lot of people down there. How was it? Friendly? Did you make friends? Did you? Very friendly, yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> How many friends did you make? How many new friends? Uh, and from other schools or from? Um, you no, didn't see other schools? It was schools. just like random people would just come up to the telescope and say, hey, and like, can we look through? Yeah. Through it? And it, yeah, we made a small talk and everything, so cool. Did you guys go into town at all for lunch, or did you eat there at the park, or? No, we, we, uh, we grilled uh, burgers and hot dogs there, so cool. it's a good experience. Good. You guys don't remember the ice cream then, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. 
That was going into town. That was the town. Yeah, that was the town. I think one thing to share about the atmosphere is the moment that that happens and then the moment it ends, the only thing I think people are thinking about is when's the next one? Seven so, years, right? Right. And then after that, that's it for the century, right? So um, that's what's neat for me to talk about in class is, you know, for these kids that were there to tell other people, and I think Frank has, has done a good job of telling their class, just you had to be there. And it's something that you just have to experience. You know, watching a video, um, seeing a partial eclipse is not the same. And I think everybody agreed that, you know, you just, you want to be at the next one and you can't wait for the next one. So it's something that really is, is so unique. And the fun thing to do if you ever go is to just watch people's reactions. And some people really just freak out. You can't take pictures, phones aren't designed for it. And then the human element of that. There's so much history there. Um, you know, with uh, with just civilizations and astronomy, but you know, there's so much science history as well with these events. But there's just a camaraderie that mm -hmm. is kind of silent. Mm -hmm. But everybody is feeling that. I, I just can't wait for the next one. That's awesome. It definitely got dark. It definitely and thankfully got cooler because it was a, it was a really really hot day. Um, and like I said, it, it when it immediately happened, people tried to kind of almost cheer, but then you realize it wasn't really a cheering kind of moment, and it was quiet. It was so cool, it was dark, and it was quiet, and um, it was just a, a completely different experience than I have ever had. I really appreciated Dr. Nolan's son's response to something along the lines of, this is being a young man. This has been the best two minutes of my life. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, Nathan's parents weren't thinking, who the heck is calling on the door on Sunday morning when we went to go pick him up? And I said, you think he's going to be freaked out if he sees his teacher and principal standing on his front porch? <laughs> That's cool. But it was, it was great. And um, they all swam in the pool at the hotel that night, and I went down and I asked him, I said, how many of you guys knew each other? Like, huh? Because you're actually talking and having fun. And, you know, like, well, I, I knew him, or I had a class with her, but, you know, they're all in the pool laughing, joking, so I just think that that's, you know, when I see them helping each other to get up on that rock, when they, they're in the pool together, they also made a, a connection, not just, you know, watching the eclipse, but a connection that they brought home here to Tilly Park High School, so just another a value out of it. You guys friends now? Yeah. <laughs> How is this, how are this? I take that as yes, we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now that we have permission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is all, this is all recorded, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's easy stuff to support. It really, right. especially like you said, when the kids start communicating with each other and opening up. I mean, yeah, that's invaluable. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all Before, for taking the time to yeah. take the kids. It's, yeah. it's just as fabulous for you to do as well and take time away from your family or have your families with you to go and do this. Yeah. Nathan, in your defense, I know your sleeping late is as rare as the eclipse happens. So. <laughs> This is the uh, first commemorative oh, wow. uh, the eclipse That's cool. poster. Expect another one in 2024. <laughs> 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 this is my retirement year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Why don't you guys come down? Yeah. yeah. I got all your signatures. Get over here. Yeah, you're J. Aaron's as well. Right. <laughs> I, I would like to add something, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I would also like to thank the staff for the answers. Awesome. Yeah. Great. I think it's been like, it's been like, obviously, because they did pass it all before. But I agree with that. Let's check that. Okay, this is what came from not happening. 
and that because the attitudes and enthusiasm of the staff members present, that's what encouraged and fostered that. So again, thank you for enlightening these kids on and making it a fun, uh, an educational field trip at the same time. It was overcast for us. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, it was. It was overcast here, so we could see. It got cloudy for a little while, and ever, like I said, everything from the moment we left school to the time we got the kids just seemed to work out. And it got cloudy, and uh, here we go, and cloud part of it was absolutely incredible. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, our students get the education they deserve. 
there was a time when the students you received from Prairie Hill School District may not have come to you as prepared as they should be because when my children first came that was the argument that was presented to me all oh, those children from Prairie Hills they come to us they're not ready they're not this they're not that but that is why in 2003 I ran for the school board of education in Prairie Hills to ensure that our children receive the best education possible our board of education has made it our mission to update and enhance the educational experience for all of our students my granddaughter is now in eighth grade at Prairie Hills Junior High. She is a straight A student, and she will come to you pr fully prepared for the most rigorous curriculum you can throw at her. She will be ready. It is my hope that every student in District 228 will begin to receive the best education possible. It is embarrassing to sit across the table from my U.S. representative and be told for the last four years that our students are not prepared for the workforce that exists today. Our school boards, both elementary and high school, need to get together and figure out where the breakdown occurs in the education of our children. Because the BASA meetings, and I've been to a couple of the BASA meetings, do not seem to be working. We need something more where meaningful educational pedagogy is not only discussed but implemented for the sake of our children and isn't that the reason we are all here in the first place because there is nothing more important in this entire world than our children i want to thank you thank you sir. are there any other comments from the public move on to superintendent's report dr Kendall. Freedom of Information Act request since the last board meeting. Mr. Nathan Mahalik of the Illinois Retired Teacher Association requested email addresses for all teachers and administrators. Retired teachers and administrators, this request has been completed. By law, a compensation report is presented to the school board annually on or before October 1st. This report includes the base salary benefits of specific staff members. The information is also posted on the district's website. Uh, Ms. Gleason, I present the District 228 Salary and Benefit Report to you this evening. Uh, superintendent's Report, the Illinois Association of School Boards will recognize Mrs. El Evelyn Gleason and Mrs. Leslie Jones at the IASB South Cook Division meeting on November 1st. The IASB will recognize them for their time and effort they devoted to IASB leadership activities and service to public education in the community. Congratulations to both Mrs. Gleason and Mrs. Jones. Later this evening, I will be asking the Board of Education to vote on a three-year contract with the Bremen Educational Support Team. I want to take this opportunity to thank the people on both sides of the table for their hard work and diligence to finalize this contract. I applaud you all for your efforts. Thank you. Uh, board member comments? Um, oh, yes. Go ahead, Leslie. Oh. Um, it, was, it was a while ago, but um, I was able to attend Open Institute Day at Oak Forest High School, and I was glad to see all the t those who attended, all the teachers and staff um, for the Open Day Institute. Um, I was able to attend speed. I tried to attend can't spread myself around all to all of the the meetings but I did I was able to attend the special education forum that they had uh, on Institute Day uh, where they they had they always have something very interesting and inter very interactive with uh, the teachers in our district um, this year they decided to draw a pig and decipher <laughs> decipher meaning from a pig so anyway it was very interesting you had to in order to understand the value of the pig drawings. Um, also, uh, I was able to attend the fine arts where they were gathering together their different calendars and their hopes for the new year and their appreciation for the new uniforms that they had gotten and um, as well as uh, looking forward to the new year and the different things that they are be able to do in their various departments. Um, also attended math and they were very interactive there as well where they were very excited about the new year. 
the social workers and counselors were very excited about the new activities that are the, the students can look forward to in this up and coming year. Um, also, I was able to attend uh, the new turf. Uh,